So I wanted to get this meeting on the uh, on calendars to be a monthly cadence so that we can talk about all the co the content that's coming up across the different teams in a cadence that that can that's going to play into our campaign plans and our prescriptive persona based content and buyer journeys. So I've had individual conversations with a lot of you about the content that's being produced and how we'd be using it in our campaigns, but it seems like it would be relevant for all of us to get together at the same time and kind of share what's coming up until we get that right cadence of how we do this asynchronous. Um, I wanted to talk about the compelling ungated content journeys, still working on some technical pieces there, but we do have some good updates from marketing ops and content marketing or our marketing ops. Basically, Robert, Sarah, and Matt have been doing a testing piece on Path Factory that would enable us to do less forms and have that data still transferred to the visible touch points, which is really good news. But more to come on that. There's just a few things that I have done checking out um, in terms of daisy chaining content together before rolling that out. But you can follow the Epic and I'll loop you all in when more information is available. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to set the tone for what what I think would be a useful purpose for this meeting, but curious if anyone has other thoughts or things that have been top of mind in terms of content as we align to the segment marketing plan. Okay, if not, then I just like wanted to call out a couple of a couple of individual conversations that I've had that have different content pieces of them. Like John, we've been talking about segment and persona based content journeys that drive to proven CTAs. Um, the, and then Dan, you have all the learn content for technical buyers, which is meant to be top of funnel, as you mentioned. So I think that bringing those to light for all the different teams to see would maybe help us to utilize them across the entire buyer journey. Eric and Bree, we've talked about content clusters and you have that listed in the handbook. Mahesh is talking about the GitHub roadmap comparisons. And I know he has some other content coming out related to comparisons. Um, wanted to talk with Colin about upcoming opportunities for analysts and when we have that budget available. And then Tina, I think she can't make it on this call, but also partner content that's coming out from her team. So those are just some things that I wasn't sure if everyone on the team was aware of the content being produced by other team members and how we might want to bring that together collaboratively towards the prescriptive buyer journeys we've been talking about for the segment plan. I think going over the buyer's journey would be useful for one of the things useful for us to do. I'll, I'll tell you this much, uh, just before this call, I got it, I got sucked into a uh, talking about segment persona aligned content of a request from a for a event to do a PPM presentation to a group of internal engineers at a customer site. And I, I raised my hand and said, why would we do that? It doesn't make any sense. And so it, it's a, I think the more we can get aligned around what content we're delivering to what persona and why makes a lot of sense. And this was a case in which I'm asking the why because it doesn't make, doesn't add up. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but the more we look at this and how we align to what challenges people are facing, and especially if we're trying to land low, right. And what's going to cause someone to make a decision to start using GitLab to adopt GitLab to buy GitLab initially, to make that initial purchase around one of our key landing use cases, right? I think this is our opportunity to make sure we're all collectively aligned. Because regretfully, we tend, we have the, we run the risk of working in silos. Exactly. And we need to, we need to do everything we can to break that, break that down. Because if someone is learning, and I'll, you know, a good example of how we could find ourselves in silos is if we have lots of content teaching someone about a topic, but we don't take them from there to the call to action or move them on the buyer's journey to where we teach them about the solution or teach them about the product or where they get to a trial and, or go to learn to learn how to do it in the product. This is where I think we have to figure out how do we, how do we weave together, stitch together, if you will, the, the stuff. I'm no, no, I'm on a, I'm running the risk of saying something stupid. I'll take it for you, Erica. Focus on the green card. Well, and I think just, I don't know if it, I'm sure it was a field marketing ask on the PPM, John. Just shoot it. To not me. throwing anyone on the bus. I'm, I'm, I'm sorting it. Do not. Well, do, I think not go, do not go the, the opportunity that we have is to re-educate sales 
around these journeys because they see something and they're like, oh, we need that. So. Oh, I get it. No, no, I, tro I totally get it. But it's a, uh, yeah, no, no one, no, it's an education. Frankly, it's an education across the board. And people say, oh, well, we want them to buy Ultimate. So therefore, we got to show them all the Ultimate features. Like, no. I mean, you got to show them the features that matter to them mm -hmm. as individuals. So I don't know. Or as personas. I got uh, off on a rant. I, I may suggest we map out sort of the typical tactics we use in different phases, sort of the tactics we use to get people in the door, what we use for them to actually get into the next step in the buyer journey, coming in from interest to an evaluation and obviously purchase. So if you were to just identify I think for this meeting, more on the front end is like the top end of the funnel is probably a little bit more important, not to be a little the rest of the journey, but I feel like that getting that pipeline in and built is kind of critical activity because everything else kind of flows from there. So if you were to maybe just highlight the tactics that we use there, then we can map all the content that we have as potentially suitable for a certain tactic or not. Online ad, you know, is this content suitable for that particular, you know, channel? Um, is it just emails and, you know, events and uh, webinars and so on and so forth so that we can actually have these arrows, right, in our quiver in each of these buckets and then kind of start using them as, as the need arises. And I just think broadly in terms of not just the current state of the content, but can it be repurposed in some way to actually use in that channel, right? Like you've created the roadmap or whatever. Can it be repurposed to put in an ad, right? Is that, does that make sense? So kind of thinking a little bit more um, aloud on the various uses or various forms that content can take and use in various channels, probably increase the leverage for us and reduce the pressure to build just new content, but really try and repurpose the content. This is something that um, I started building for a very specific piece of the awareness funnel. So it's not the whole funnel. So obviously lots of people are involved with that, but I wonder if we could take, it's, it's linked in here as the awareness organic search content funnel it links to a mural. If we could take this as a template to start mapping that out. And I think an area where we can really all like the point of focus for collaboration could be within path factory. Cause we know right now that we have basically a path, per use case, but there's 27 assets in there. They're not targeted to a person or a stage. So if we can look at taking that one path factor experience and breaking it into smaller, in path factor, you really only want to have like three to five assets anyway, so we're misusing the tool right now. And I identify the different paths we want to put people in. And then we can look at how do we get people into those paths? But when I think of content, especially and like what content marketing is doing and what strategic marketing is doing, Leslie, I'm not so close to what your team needs. So I'm gonna leave you out of this for now. <laughs> um, but where we can collaborate is what content we need in each one of those paths to move people to the next. Cause I know that there's also a lot of this content already existing. For example, when I put together the awareness funnel, Dan, I was thinking about some of the demos and learn content that you have that would be really good to put at the end of an awareness path factor experience where they've done their education and now we want to show them how GitLab does it. So I think mapping out the whole journey is a really big, you know, project to do. But if we could just think about that like Matt, for example, where it's like, we identified this as our awareness level asset for this persona. Let's drive paid ads to that and drop them into this experience. And I think that starts to get into that daisy chain content, Jackie, that Dunk is talking about where we drop them into that. And it's, let's say they convert, we can send them an email on another use case. So just start um, feeding them more content and exposing them to more use cases. The, the the path factory piece to me, I feel like is a big piece where everybody's added stuff. 
the marketing program managers, I think that's who puts them together, Jackie. Yeah, we have the author access to define. Yeah. So everybody has a hand in it. And I think if we could get those really a solid, we just keep pointing to those. And then it's an easy thing to measure as well. Yeah, that's definitely the route we're going for developing the ungated content journeys and using those proven CTAs. Proven CTAs, for the most part, I think being, or at least our hypothesis is trial and like usually webcast, maybe demo. But that's something that we'll tease out as we run the ungated content pads. Um, I think. And I, I put in two murals. One is Erica's mural for the awareness content funnel, which I think is maybe answering your question a little bit, Mahesh, but then I also added the mural for types of touch. It's like more high level on some general channels and tactics that we use depending on top, middle, bottom funnel. So we can refine that to look the way that we want to in terms of developing those buyer journeys. One question I have is around the mapping itself of the buyer journey and how, what does collaboration look like between all of our teams who all have a stake in this because we're either utilizing the journeys or they're being developed and it's a very collaborative effort? How do we do that in a remote situation and make sure that we're breaking down the silos so that everyone's on the same page and we're utilizing all the content produced most effectively in these buyer journeys? That's one question I have. Damn. The digital <laughs> asset management. Yes. On? <laughs> No, not done. Damn. <laughs> no, I mean, that, that's, that's one of the things that we ran into and we're trying to sort out early with the learn project. And I think that's like, um, marketing operations is looking at a digital asset management system different than a CMS with that in mind, which is we're all creating content in different places and shoving it into different places. And so we don't have one single place where we can all go and see what type of content is available. Um, and then know where to get it. Um, I think that's what needs to solve this, or that, that's the thing that would solve this for us. I think it's also agreeing on and committing to a single map, a single content strategy that we're all moving towards. So like, Jackie, I think your outline is a really great big picture. And then we kind of narrow in on different pieces, but and I know we created a single room like in mural to house all of these things so everybody can see it because I don't know if one mural board is big enough for everything. But I think it's crucial we're all working from the same documents. That's what I mean by like one map, one content strategy. Like if we're going to map out all of our path after paths, like let's make sure that everyone on this call is all using the same document to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's sometimes where we start down a really good path of collaboration and then suddenly there's like 50 different documents or versions of it. Version control, we need version control, like Dan said. <laughs> Great idea. You know, it might be helpful. I'm, maybe it's me. I'm reading the full funnel marketing mural. And I'm, Maybe it'd be useful, Jackie, I think you, you authored this, right? Yeah, it was kind of just a brain dump for- Do you want to walk through it and explain? Because I mean, I'm, I have questions that I'm thinking about. Maybe if you, I don't know if it, it'd help anyone else or if it's me. If it's me, we can do this separately. I don't want to take a room. I can do it in general high level, if it's helpful. Um, I do have a video that goes a little bit more in depth, but the- it's, it's mainly to be, for those who are more visually inclined, or maybe when you read through the, this segment marketing plan, there's so much detail that it's hard to conceptualize how this maybe fits together. So it's, it's basically brain dumping this into a diagram then, and it's meant to be iterated. Like I need feedback from everyone and try to figure out how we best align this. Uh, so the, the original intent is just to kind of share that we're moving beyond just thinking about driving MQLs and because we now are very critically looking at SAO and closed one as, um, as indicators of our success and what we're driving for sales. I included all the channels and some of them, like I've just been putting in teams that usually are aligned to those channels, but this can almost maybe sit above. 
SCM and CI or VC and CNCI are the channels or from the segment plan what we need to win on. So that's that's where we've been putting it top funnel and that we've had some conversations about DevSecOps, maybe GitOps being later stage. This, I don't really know if I like this layout, but like totally open to opinions or just trashing this from this side. But the concept that we are moving to a, a strategy that's thinking about the sales segments and do we have prescriptive buyer journeys that are different based on the segment because of the strategy aligned to the segment, for example, large being aim high, land low, mid market bottoms up and tops down and SMB surfing the inbound wave. Does that change the prescriptiveness of those journeys? And then I can see these kind of linking out to something that's more, um, more detailed and more comprehensive. And I kind of saw Erica's as like si kind of sitting up here and we can also just fold it into the same view, but this awareness content, like the topic page the traffic sources, I feel like this could almost fold in and be more prescriptive or detailed on the entry pages. So that's, that's a general view. Any questions? So just to give some context of what I was trying to do, I saw your journey, um, Jackie, and so my mind went to, okay, I personally and my team is responsible for a certain section of this. Um, so how do we get them from that entry point to the conversion mm -hmm. piece, which is the demo or trial and the content that's going to get them there. So that's a, you know, it's like a, a zoom in on a single piece. And then John, if you look at it, you know, there's ways to get to the solutions page there. And then what I could see us doing is, you know, you adding in and collaborating on, okay, from the solutions page, if they make it there, what paths do we drop them into to keep trying to get them to convert? Because more likely than not, and we'll have to test this, people probably won't convert straight off of a topic or web cluster, Unlikely. or we'll drop them. Right. Yeah, so right. we need to get them to the solutions page and then what paths are we trying to push them into? And it just kind and, of goes on from yeah. there. And, and depending upon where they're at and what they know about GitLab, they either will or won't. I mean, if you, know, if you think about it, the a lot of the content we do at the awareness level is, is really trying to you know get people to be aware. Oh, that's why it's called awareness. But it gets them like a foot in the door for them to start poking around and learning. And then as they learn more and they start to see some proof points and they start to see you know, evidence that GitLab will solve their problem for them, then they're prepared to take that next step. And whether it's downloading GitLab or try, you know, starting a trial or in, you know, my own personal example was I signed up for GitLab for free because I thought I'd just use it for free and experiment with GitLab. And that was when I was, before I joined GitLab, right? I was outside of the organization, but I wanted to learn that was the way I took, the path I took. And, and so I think different people are going to take different journeys to learn depending upon this. And, and I wonder, and thank you, Jackie, for explaining kind of what you had here. Cause it, I was, I was reading this before and I was got stuck reading the, 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 that section there where visiting lobster was pointing. Yeah. Or Eric Lindbergh is now pointing, but the uh, that section I was reading, I thought, well, those don't link together. But but really, what we're looking at here are collections of things that that relate to that stage in the buyer's journey, more or less. And then that gets applied on the right when we build out a buyer's journey based on different segments and different personas. Yeah, I would yeah. get much more detailed. Like I, I strap it and put it on a different page if it makes sense. I would suggest that there's an intermediate in between what's on the left and what's on the right, right there where that dotted line is where Erica was pointing, uh, or, or me, I'll be the shrimp guy and I'll point here. I wonder if there's a intermediate that we have a generic content flow or what we think the flow is for each of the different use cases. And then we, then we take it and we specialize it for each of the segments. It, it would seem to me that there would be a logical intermediate of saying there's a CI one, an SCM one, a DevSecOps ones for each one of our, for any one of our use cases that we think are, are gonna follow. And the, the only other thing I would throw into this thing is that one of the other entry points around awareness 
or up near the top is things like comparisons. You know, the work that Mahesh has been doing on building these comparisons that when someone's searching for how does this compare versus that, that yeah, those was, kind of things start the journey for, for I was some gonna, people. And it might be a different journey too. I was gonna make a similar comment, John. I think, I don't know that generic general confident flow is what goes in that middle piece because i think one of the things and maybe i'm just not grokking it from this graphic is and he's touched on it which is different people are going to different personas different people learn in different ways and someone else said that too um, some are going to come to the solution pages to read more and get proof points and and hear a high level some are going to look at it from a comparison perspective others are going to dive right into let me see the product and, and, and watch you know and see what it can actually do Right, and that's the technical uh, influencer buyer, et cetera. And so I'm not sure I see that, I, that there's that here, that there's different paths that we might lay out based on not just where they are, but who they are and where they're, where they're coming from, like where they want to start. Would it be fair to think maybe instead of segment, because I, I put segment persona based buyer journey on the right side um, th in thinking that typically with the segments, we have slightly different personas because of the strategies for each. For example, with large, we're going after individual contributor, but maybe with SMB, we're looking at more of the like executive decision maker so that that kind of aligns, but maybe we build this out instead as personas. I don't know, just thinking out loud. Is that kind of what you're saying? Like, um, well, I'm not saying we shouldn't be looking at the segments for the, from the segmented marketing plan. And that definitely, that's, that's how we're approaching so I just think, I just think there's, there's a different types, and it may not even be persona related, it's probably more persona related, but there's different, there's different places that different personas are going to want to go to first, and we need to track kind of the journey from that point, right? Um, and yeah, maybe those align with the segments here, large, medium, SMB. Um, are you more likely to get a technical person digging into GitLab first and them kind of trying to, uh, you know, uh, push everyone towards it from that perspective if they're in an SMB or a large uh, company? Uh, that I'm not sure. I don't know. So I, so I think the segments matter, but I think the personas and where they're approaching us from matters too. We've got three different places already, or more, right? We've got, um, and maybe we have too many and maybe that's part of the problem, but you know, who do we think is gonna be the first people to land in, um, you know, in the topics area versus the solution page versus, uh, you know, versus learn versus the comparisons. And then what's the, what's the, the path for them from there? We have to, we should have that identified so that it's, it's intentional, right? Like if someone comes in to, to Erica's group, you know, team's pages, and they're doing kind of, hey, I want to understand this, this topic is the next logical step. There's somebody who's, who's not diving in, they're not a hands-in first, they're, they're learning generally. So the next logical step is to push them towards the solution pages to learn more at that level about GitLab itself. Well, and, and that was the, uh, and Dan, that was what I was trying to get to when, when I was thinking about this sort of general content flow. Because, yeah. you know, if, if we think about somebody landing on a, they, they, they've discovered our website for the first time, right? Well, and I'm not assuming they discovered the homepage either. I'm assuming they discovered some, some piece of content, so. right? Mm -hmm. They have a problem. They either have, they have some sort of a problem they're trying to understand more. They're understanding Git branching or they're trying to deal with, you know, uh, merge conflicts or they're trying to solve for, uh, you know, they, they, they're, they're frustrated with Jenkins plugins and Jenkins is, you know, they're, they're, they're what, for whatever reason, they, they've landed on one of our, one of our topic pages that tries to educate about that, that domain. So I'm assuming that, well, where do they go next? Logically, they would want, they would, we want, I mean, where do we want them? Where do we think they're going to go next? And where do we want them to go next? Right. And we could say, well, we want them to go do a trial, but that's not realistic. I mean, that's sort of, you know, you, you're, they're still in this stage of, yes. they could, we shouldn't deny them that choice, but logically they're going to they say, well, tell me more. 
Well, that's exactly my point, though, right? We, we, so we're we're talking the same thing, which is depending on where they start. Like each each person is not even persona, right? Some personas tend some to lean like some personas that are technical tend to lean more toward like show me the money right now. I don't want to read the fluff, right? Um, others, and this is more likely not the technical persona. It's going to say, "Hey, I want to kind of understand this, you know, at a higher level, generically first, and then maybe a little bit more about GitLab before I get hands on or get into the, you know, get get into the the nitty gritty, get under the hood." Um, and depending on where they come in, that kind of gives us a sense of, right? If if like, thank you, Jackie, you put on the website, like, there's like these here's four areas we have that they could land their journey from there is what we have to sketch out, right? Okay, if I landed on the topic page, like, like you're saying, what's the next step that's gonna make sense for that, the type of person that's likely to have landed on that page versus someone who landed and learned or, or got themselves, you know, went to learn. Okay. If they start on the homepage and they go, oh, I can learn about product solutions or I can learn about like, you know, the, see the product in action, where do they go, right? And from there, that kind of tells us about what they might wanna see next. Maybe for the folks on Learn, it's watch five videos and then, hey, here's a trial and that makes sense, right? Then the, then the elephant in the room is docs. People who are yes. in our docs is another Who is docs. just looking at that? Like, what's the difference? Like, why would you go to docs versus learn? I mean, I get it if you're on the, you know. Yeah, so docs is, is, is more of a reference and they are from the reference perspective, adding, you know, pointers to videos and things like that. Um, Learn is meant to be more of a, you know, we're going to show you things. We're not, we're, we're going to show you in bite-sized chunks of, of things you're trying to accomplish. There might be a point at which, yeah, that makes sense to come together, but they're not right now. They're pretty far from that. So, um, so most people that jump to docs do that. The mentality is I, I need a reference. I need to look up a specific thing about the product and then from there understand it. Right. Question for Erica, because I think, if I'm understanding correctly, the intent of the, the diagram that you created is to be more prescriptive on those top, like those pages, is that that's work that you're like the with growth marketing working on the website, you already are thinking about, right? And what's the collaboration like for that? Yeah. Um, they're not, so the web team, I would say, isn't thinking about buyer journeys and funder journeys like we are. They're just thinking about straight conversion. But that's also what I'm trying to bring into that diagram. And what I think we're all kind of getting at here is we have these different entry pages for a website. And to me, it makes sense to start with the website because that's where the conversion is gonna happen. Um, making sure that we're really clear on, and I know we've talked about this ad nauseum, I think we know at this point what the purpose of these different sections of the website are, but getting really clear on the next action we want them to take. Um, and then diagramming out from there. So from the topics page, for example, I'm like very confident that people aren't going to take a trial from a web cluster. So I wanna push them into a path factory experience. It's gonna give them more relevant content to like binge, hoping that they will either look at a demo or visit the solutions page. And I can put the solutions page in that path factory trap. The beauty of that is you can actually see what they're consuming. But so I'm trying to think, I know why they're here and I want them to do something specific. How do I get them from A to but, B? And Eric, in the same way, if someone's on a solution page, we're entering on and figure out what that journey looks like first before we're trying to connect all these dots. Because realistically, somebody coming onto topics, visiting solutions, comparison, doing that all in one visit, that's not gonna happen. Right. So I think it's really important that we make sure that first we're serving the intent for someone that's entering on that page and pushing them to the next before trying to connect everything across the website. Um, so more, if we get, the and I, then- I'm sorry. The, the last thing I'll say of that is when we're doing that then, so each of us are starting to think, okay, what does that path factor experience look like? And that's where some really solid cross-functional collaboration comes into play because chances are we probably have all this content 
or a version of it. And we can start cross-referencing, cross-checking, like, oh, I think I'm missing this, but, oh, Dan has this great video that explains how to do this thing we're explain explaining on the web article, but with GitLab. So that can be the last piece of content in that track. And we start to help each other plug in those Thank content you. gaps. I'm getting excited. You, that's why I keep interrupting. I'm sorry. I, I've got to calm down. If we had the more specialized path factory paths, then we could leverage them more effectively. For example, if we had a or you know, a workshop, let's pretend we had a work a hands-on workshop focusing on maybe CI best practices, or and we have people who registered for that. Well, you know what? They're they're already kind of way in there. We should, we could probably have path factory paths that would make sense for that audience too. Not necessarily at the entry at the top of the website, but they're further in the funnel. I'm becoming a path factory promoter in lots of ways, and it's probably Sarah Daly should be on here because she should be really scared. She knows this is coming. So one of the things I would suggest as a good starting point, and I don't know if you've thought about like OKRs and things for Q4, but I want the content marketing team with Sarah Daly and hopefully with the different strategic marketing teams to take a look at Path Factory and do an audit for, you know, each different stable counterparts for their use case. We have one track in there, what's in there and start to break it into the different stages and different tracks that we're going to need. So we're kind of auditing the content that's in there because that needs to happen. There's a lot of things that are mislabeled, but we're also using that to redesign the paths that we're going to put forward. And to your point before, let's say so we did run a webcast with Leslie, your team, and this is a, I don't know, consideration, consideration stage targeted webcast because we went through and determined these different paths for the stages and possibly personas, we might not even need to create a new one. We have that track already. We just plug right. them into that and that nurture and we are not reinventing the wheel every single time we do a webcast. I mean, it's going to take, I think a lot of mural boarding to get to where <laughs> we're at, but this is what makes me excited is I feel like we have, so much content that we probably have a version of almost everything we need and if we can take some time to map it out and target then we can go back and iterate or find the gaps and things like that but what's nice about this is we're not starting from scratch with the content we just we have so much of it now we just need to put it in the right places mm -hmm. well and then to echo what dan had already said in terms of like you know the uh the content management system. I mean, my team right now is looking at the analytics in Path Factory to determine what, what assets are performing best and where they want to dump the tracks. So until we have, and I don't know if we're going to get a content management system next year, but Path Factory feels like the natural location. So I, kind of Brian on my team is doing his very, very best to get us to a place where our inventory can be extensible. The problem we faced with the inventory being in a spreadsheet was every time anybody changed the spreadsheet, it broke everything. So it was really, 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 really super fragile. And, and Brian has been like doing crazy stuff. Just so you know, this is not a dam, Dan. But what Brian has done with some fancy work with Google behind the scenes is a web interface that allows you to add things to the spreadsheet or to edit things in the spreadsheet. And so he is slowly working his way through, making it possible to update and to edit things so you don't have to work in the spreadsheet, which if we get this working, we'll be able to scale this to get more people on it, which hope doesn't take away the need for a dam down. We should have called me Don. Right. But I mean, <laughs> someone accidentally called me Don in another meeting. So that was my name for the rest of the meeting. Thanks, John. Yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, this is great stuff. Uh, uh, discoverability is going to be like, is the other half of that, right? Collecting it and knowing what we have, but discoverability for everyone who's looking for something is going to be an important piece of that. And I know that right. you, it, it, with the, what you have right now, um, with the graph and whatnot, you can search for different use cases and yep. stages and yep, whatnot. Yep. So, but so yeah, ultimately, I think the dam is 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 where we want. We to have to. We we have to get to a digital asset management tool. But in the interim, the kind of the bubble gum of hacking something together with Google Sheets, Google Data with the analytics, and then this. I think we'll have something that at least will be patchwork for us to work to find assets to manage it, which I think Erica and everyone else will help us. And, and, you know, Leslie, I think all of us, it will help us as we go forward. Uh, I've already found, I've already had the benefits of, of using a couple of things like this in the past. Last week, it saved my bacon twice. My only question with that spreadsheet and what you just showed us, um, is all that content in Path Factory? Because Path Factory can give a lot of that same information, like when it was last updated, when it expires, use case topic I, I'll, I'll answer that no because i know not all of the uh, technical marketing assets are are in path factory yet um part of the challenge is is there's limited authors of that right so not everybody like with john spreadsheet that interface is specifically made so anybody who has content can can add it and tag it properly so uh, with path factory it has to exist in a path or it has to be uploaded or set up by someone Right, maybe did that to us in the path, but um, and there's what four authors, right? Um, I think because of the licensing and whatnot. I think Sarah was talking about changing that though because they can't keep up with the demand of requests to put stuff into Path Factory. Jackie, am I making that yeah. up? No, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think that we should solve for the limited access rather than building a separate solution because we would need to replicate everything that you're doing in that separate. Um, set up in Path Factory regardless. And I think there are some ways to do custom tagging in Path Factory so that it really should be the source of truth. We should have all content in there. I know, Dan, we don't have all of your technical marketing assets in there. We have for VC and CSRs, I know, because I've added that in. But maybe we just need to have okay. the right flows to make sure all content is represented. And like Erica said, maybe do an audit of what exists because sometimes it was just we had to run so fast, we were putting things in, but maybe not taking the time well, to be about tagging. Well, if so we I think the other for... part though is, sorry, John, uh, is uh, just drafting on this. I think a piece of this that's important is when it's in Path Factory, that's great. That can help as a central location of what do we have available, but what are the, also the possible outputs of that, right? Does it, is it limited to a path within the Path Factory uh, walled garden that we have? Uh, versus on the solutions page or uh, not as a pop-out bar, but like on the page as or or part of learn. Because I've been talking with Sarah about like, can Path Factory please do the back end for learn, right? I need to track all this stuff. It's there. That's what it does. And we're limited with what Path Factory, we understand, at least what I understand Path Factory can do with respect to laying those out in a way that's other than so that's uh, just know, built into the Path Factory. It's just inside out of what you're thinking. So you have a learn page with videos and stuff like that on that. You're not going to embed Path Factory onto that page, but what Path, Path Factory can do is display that page within the path. So you're still capturing the analytics in that page. It's not a separate piece of content. So if you have all your videos embedded on a page, let's say it's a BCC, let's say I want somebody to watch one of those videos, I'm not going to upload that video separately. I'm going to have Path Factory ingest that video from your page and actually display the web page. So, so I think it's just inside out from what you're talking about. I'm not sure I'm following you. Maybe this is a, a later discussion, but I mean, I, I, I'd love to hear more because I, yeah, I mean, I contemplated even that, you know, when we talk about learning paths on Learn at GitLab, like why would they not be Path Factory paths? right that are mm -hmm. like we talked about specific to technical content or specific to a certain set of content starting at a certain point um but we need to have the netflix view right we need to have like here's the content that you can kind of peruse through and find what you're looking for as opposed to the here is a a very specific path that we want you to go down um so, so. i i think if if we could solve for i'm sorry dan did you finish i know you're good 
Um, if we can solve for the access and the authorability problems and look at then we can look at we should look at Path Factory for a broader solution. I mean, if we can put things into it and use it as a asset inventory where we've got all of the metadata for a piece of content tag. I don't know. I think it's worth I I, I yeah. I think it's, it's absolutely a great worth a dive. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's a great it's, first step toward like collaboration, not just across two teams, but strategic marketing, content, and digital marketing, doing the audit, developing the paths. And it, that's something in one place where all the work happens there and we're all working together on that one piece of it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jed, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, I, I think so, that's spot on, Erica. Like, I think if we're all in the same system, and we can, we, I think we have enough of a reason for maybe considering a, a larger license set for Path Factory because we're all so focused on these prescriptive buyer journeys so that we can do more together. And it's not, there's no bottlenecks. I think I set some time up to talk with you and Sarah about that this week. Um, but I do think it would lead to more collaboration. Okay. Any other people who didn't speak too much? Matt, Colin, Bree, any anything on your mind from this conversation? Not specifically, just trying not to break up the flow. Didn't hear anything <laughs> objectionable. I think from my end, from the paid digital side, it's just getting a better understanding of um, where we put certain tracks and I think I'm part of wanting to let the data speak for itself and figure out like tell it like have our audience tell us what they want so then, then we can develop tracks around that and then show them the next next path I think doing that especially in like paid search where some of the paid search intent um, on the queries are more um, top funnel or more like educational content like you don't want to like throw a webcast in front of those people and so how do we get them to a an awareness page but then still at some point be able to capture their information in a form yeah man i think that's that's a great point i think that that supports the notion that i think seems to have come up in this discussion and this has been around which is the notion of that path factory should have different types of paths multiple multiple different types of targeted paths not, not, I mean, they're all targeted, but I mean, at different levels for different entry points for different purposes. Um, yeah, like, for example, what you're talking about. Yeah, 100%. Like I use the example of like, one of our top queries is what, if, what is DevOps? But then we land somebody on like a webcast or like a, gated con like a piece of gated content. And a lot of times I'm trying to like understand what that is. I don't necessarily want to fill out a form. Um, I just want to like get my information. But that doesn't say like we can't leverage that traffic or that person two or two or three touches down the line with something else that's gated. That's where our team is trying to come in and swoop in with that um, educational format of content and most of the what is. Um, I think we have a lot of web articles coming out in the next couple of quarters that are trying to capture the SEO um, audience that are searching for these things and that's kind of where hopefully we can start to provide the answer to that question without driving them right to a webcast. We can first land them on an awareness level piece of content and then slowly filter them through the, the right channels to get there eventually, but we're, we're focused on that at this point. And, and that's something that we'll be focused on from campaign side as well, is with the ungating strategy, with more to come there, we'll be like if instead of Matt driving from an ad to directly to a gated page where they have to provide their information, driving them straight into a path factory track where they can kind of choose those from those prescriptive offers or those different assets. And that's where I think if we can all team together on that journey and where they are in their buying journey, that would be, that would prove more effective and have the right conversion CTA offer throughout those which we'll learn as we test. But 
Yeah. And I think part of it also is like not force feeding somebody like a specific topic. Like if they come in on a CI content and they want, I don't know, they, all of a sudden they start binging on, on GitOps content. Um, I think that's one of the things that I've, I've learned over the last year is sometimes we force feed them on. It's like, you're going to like CI and you're going to sign up for CI, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but people have different interests or what they're trying to solve for is, doesn't fit into that use case. So I'd like to have the, the flexibility to learn and understand what people are wanting and then give that to them um, in, a, in a smarter fashion. So that's interesting. One of the reasons that I, when I was putting the learn concept together is this notion of, of peripheral vision. Like when you come in for one thing, what you see that you didn't know you were interested in, like next to it, um, which is why the organization of the page, rather than having like a single path, here's the, you know, that's kind of, kind of how we're using it right now is like that, you know, you took a spoon of this, here's a bigger spoon of it, right? Um, and I'm wondering with the thought about, um, the, about Pathfinder potentially backing um, what we do with Learn is maybe, you know, I'll, I'll explore this and love your inputs on this, but maybe, maybe Learn is really a different visual representation, like, everything at once, Netflix style of our pads, so that people can have that peripheral, you know, attachment and find stuff uh, like, oh, I was asking about SCM, but I didn't know they did CI. Let me learn about that, right? You, you mean like a, a grid of all the different paths you click on this path, that yeah. path? That's exactly like what this? it's meant to be. Searchable and also eventually like, hey, you've been looking at this, here's, you know, recommend, and literally Netflix is the model. They've perfected that, right? Um, so yeah, and, and are we doing? Have we done anything? I mean, the the, the go ahead. sorry, just to just to finish the thought on that. I mean, with Path Factory, the the one challenge that I have with that is that the notion of what we're doing with Learn is that eventually more than just us GitLab people will be creating paths that others can consume, um, kind of open source, if everyone can contribute, kind of thing, and we would curate it. But I mean, we can, that's a different, that's a future problem to solve. I don't know that Path Factory will, will allow for that, but I mean, I don't, wouldn't want that to block the potential of doing, you know, the first step, so. Sorry, John, go ahead. Yeah, I was thinking about it. You know, Jack, you talked about the ungating strategy. Are we thinking about progressive profiling? Yes, essentially, but that's, that's part of the more technical piece that needs to be worked out. That's, like, that's what we, when we say the ungating strategy, we mean progressive profiling. Somewhat, because right now, typically we're looking for that conversion because we've been focused on that top funnel, like get them yeah, to yeah, convert yeah. quickly yep. and then nurture them to MQL. With this, it'd be more, let's play to the, our typical audience's interest in open source, let them engage and give them the right offer where they're ready to give us their information. It doesn't feel as, let's say, well, aggressive in well, wanting to get and, their and and the difference between asking for their whole diary, their whole CV in one form versus say, hey, let me get your email so I can send you more. And like, then, then later on, it's like, you know, you can ask for bits of this as you go progressively. Mm -hmm. is, is the, is much, it's a much smaller ask to ask for a piece of information versus I want your whole freaking, I want the, everything to, to do bank qualification. And mm -hmm. Let me take bank qualification and put it up through the form. There we go, bank qualification. Here's, here's the 10 field form, fill it out, please. Yeah. yeah. You know, ask me one question, I'll, I'll answer one question. Ask me 10 questions. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, and I think so at the next? end of the day. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. No, I was going to say, what's next steps? I'm, I'm just excited to, I'm excited to get moving on this because I think there's a huge potential of us to leverage Path Factory in, in multiple levels. And I want to get, First off, I want to get into this quickly so we can start to evaluate from an inventory perspective how that how that would work. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And I, it's been very clear from a lot of conversations that everyone's thinking about things similarly, especially as they align to the strategy. So making sure that the right, like at least representation from the different teams is in the room so that we're be able to then build those bridges and I'll be kind of tracking towards the same thing. Was the intent. So this has been a really helpful meeting just to hear some of the things that you all are working on and hopefully it's been helpful to you as well. Um, the prescriptive buyer journeys, I know that campaign managers are thinking about the nurtures and nurtures will likely align straight up to the path factory experiences 
And those prescriptive paths are something that we'll lean on some of the other team, like the, the more content generating teams to help build to, but want to make sure that Leslie and her team is in the loop, as well as Matt thinking about the digital buyer journey and just everything comes together more cohesively. So I don't know if there's specific next steps that anyone wants to call out. I think identifying kind of like how collaboration works with the teams can be an ongoing conversation to make sure that we're all aligned and tracking towards the same thing and not duplicating efforts in different teams. So the one thing that I can point out, and John, we're meeting later this week, and I think you and I could dig into this deeper, but Dan probably needs to be part of this conversation too. Um, as I'm drafting like OKRs for Q4, I'm getting pretty specific in terms of the tactics the teams are going to be working on and mapping buyer's journey for like the topic section, for example, is one of those things. I'm wondering if we can all align to a single project where it's, you know, the that journey on our section of the website and the path factory audit um, and making sure that those are front and center for our work in Q4. Not to say we can't get started sooner, but in my experience, if this work isn't directly tied to OKRs and initiatives mm -hmm. that Daniel is okay, it's not gonna happen. Um, and then we could all rally around a single project, kind of like we did with the marketing agility projects would be my suggestion. Make sure we're working from the same epic and we're, we spend the next month basically defining the steps we need to take to get this done as a team. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Um, one question that I have is also, would it be, I have this set for a monthly cadence. Would it be relevant to meet in two weeks instead to read this, like to discuss maybe proposals for OKRs for Q4? I don't know when those need to be shaped up, but just kind of wanted to throw that idea out there. Any thoughts? Yes, we should meet sooner. Yes. And, and yes, I th and the, I think the other thing we should do much, much sooner is address whatever the bottlenecks or barriers are mm -hmm. path back to more fully leveraging path factory. For me, that's yeah. the big question. You know, right now path factory is, has, is a interesting solution, but it's the limitations that we have as far as access accessibility and, and you know, how it works. So, well, right. And, and part of it is right. Understanding what, what, how much we can stretch it beyond what we're, doing with it today, right? We really right. need to understand it because it has right. so, so much potential for everything we're talking about, but we have Correct. to push that down, okay. I think. Yeah, and I, I have um, actually a talk with, I think, Eric Abri and Sarah, because we've been primarily the, the most heavy users of Path Factory to discuss access requests and how maybe that can be opened up. So we'll be addressing that this week and we'll bring this feedback there as well. You know, I would suggest too, if John and Dan can make it, bringing them in, because honestly, I don't think my yeah. team has an access issue right now. So I, we can't speak to the bottlenecks that Dan and John's teams are facing. Great. Yeah, I know that my team is the bottleneck. So I think John and Dan, it'd be great to bring you in as well. Leslie, do you want to be joining that call as well? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll add you all to the call. And then one other question for our next meeting. Is there anyone missing from this call that you identify that, that is doing a lot of content generation maybe, or that would, it would be great to have them looped in on this. And maybe add just from the organic SEO side, either Niall or Shane to this. Okay, good call. And I'll add um, Sarah. I think she, it would be good for her to have some background on what we're talking about. Do we need to have some sort of representative from the docs perspective from the technical mark, uh, content team? Given that we identified that as another place where people might land and need to be shuffled. I would, Dan, I would suggest that I think we should keep them on the radar, but off out of the room for now, because I think we've got enough on our plate to sort out in our own house. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if, if, if we have a whole marketing site and a whole marketing workflow nailed, then we should try to solve docs. Docs is a pretty good place, but let's not try to cloud. I mean, we've got a lot to solve for ourselves. I agree. I agree. I agree. Fair enough. Um, before we end this, Jackie, thank you for putting this team together and this, this discussion. I think it's a, a, a very important and uh, valuable discussion and uh, focus that we're talking about here. And there's a lot. 
a lot of good alignment that can happen from this. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks, everyone. And I'll put together the two recordings because my internet ex <laughs> issue. And then I'll put it on GitHub and filter it. And if you want to share it with your teams, then they can have some visibility into what we've been discussing today. Very cool. Thank Good. you. All right. Thanks for your time, everyone. Have a good All one. Right, bye bye. Bye.